Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and environment. In this session, we are going to discuss about a very interesting theory which is related to landscape evolution and development. And the theory is called Dynamic Equilibrium Theory of Landforms Development given by J.T. Hack. Now remember, this dynamic equilibrium was first talked about in the principles of G.K. Gilbert as we have discussed in the before lectures. So if you have not watched the lectures on G.K. Gilbert's principles of geomorphology and landscape development, you can go to the playlist of geomorphology and watch it there. So today what we are discussing here is that in 1960s, when quantitative revolution was picking up in geography, everywhere in the world, Quantitative techniques were applied to understand landforms development as well as other geographical factors. The same time when JT Hack comes up with this particular theory of landform development in a very concrete and precise manner using the Gilbert's idea itself. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't also forget to share the videos with maximum people possible. So now let's discuss this dynamic equilibrium theory of landform development by J.T. Hack in 1960, this gentleman here. So he was basically an American geologist and geomorphologist that we know and he was supporter of what? The advocate of dynamic equilibrium theory of landscape development which was brought from the principles of G.K. Gilbert earlier, right? And it talks about two important things. What is the two important words? One is called energy balance and the second thing is that energy balance which envisions one particular thing and what is that? You can read here the statement of J.T. Hack that what is this energy balance and what it envisions, what it promises, what it brings out. So, so long as the factors controlling landscape development and denudational processes, remember the denudational processes are what? Weathering, erosion, mass wasting, all those processes and energy in the open geomorphic system remains constant. It means the energy has to be constant in the system. What will happen? There is no appreciable change. Right? So there will be no appreciable change means no evolution in landforms through time. It means he was almost against the time dependent models of landscape evolution. So he said as long as there is no change in the energy levels, there will be no evolution of landforms. Right? So that was important here to understand that factors controlling landform development and denudational processes and energy should not be constant if you need evolution, if you need change. It has to be dynamic in nature, but it will tend towards equilibrium. That's the important point that at the end it will attain an equilibrium. Remember Hoover Mekin's concept of graded profile, graded profile of equilibrium. So similarly here, dynamic equilibrium of landform development also promised this particular structure here where you see that if there has to be an evolution, need is that this constancy of the system's energy is not good. You need that energy changes from one form to the other. There is a dynamicity in that. So that was important point and important premise of this important theory that talks about landforms evolution. But it was independent of time as we say. So how it was? Let's elaborate further. So as you know that JT Hack is a champion of what? Time independent model where landscape variability is due to age is not modeled. So what is there? Rather, it is considered as a source of variability in the landscape from related to contemporary processes. It means geological processes, geological time scale, historical processes are not considered here. What is important is the current surficial processes. So what is the approach? The approach assumes dynamic equilibrium between contemporary surficial processes. Now here is the catch word. Contemporary surficial processes and surface upon which they are acting. So there are two things here. One is the process which is acting right now on the landform and one is the surface itself. Its structure, its composition. Right? That's important here. So Hack chose dynamic equilibrium as his conceptual framework and also his methodological framework to explain it. And where did he study? Look into this particular part. So you see Appalachian Plateau, then you have Valley Ridge, Blue Ridge Mountains, Piedmont Plains and Coastal Plains. Look at the structure of slope. 
that four unit model of slope given by L.C. King as well as Alan Wood's model. If you have not watched those videos, we have also done that video in geomorphology playlist on slope development. So look here from Appalachian Mountains towards the coastal plain. You have this gradation, right? So this was being studied by G.T. Hack and he derived this perspective directly from G.K. Gilbert as we have mentioned. Right, so that's important. And Hack applied dynamic equilibrium to reinterpret what these Appalachian plateaus, Appalachian mountains, and the landscape that led Davis to think in terms of change over time. So actually, what was the thing? Davis also studied the same structure, but he gave the concept of structure, process, and stage as functional relationship. Now, Hack denies this function of being that time function. He says it's just surficial process that is happening right now in contemporary times and what the rock structure is. That is what is the part of this dynamic equilibrium theory. So what we see here is the time independent perspective of Gilbert is reflected in his laws of these four things. One is uniform slope, structure, divides of increasing acclivity, tendency of equality of action. Four important points that we need to remember here. So what is uniform slope? Non-linear increase in rate of erosion with slope angle. So with slope angle, there is a non-linear, not a straight line increase in rate of erosion. So that was uniformity of the slope that's important. Then we talk about structure. Differential erosion is one that is being talked here. That differential erosion on resistant and non-resistant substratum is different. Right. So it will depends upon that particular structure of the rock. Is it resistant variety of rock or non resistant variety of rock? Right. And then we have fourth point that is tendency of equality of action that is talking about equilibrium, the tendency of landscape to attain that. So same rates of erosion on hard and soft rocks through adjustment of slope angles, steep and high reliefs in strong rocks, low gradient and reliefs in weak rocks. So it will all depend upon this particular thing that are the relief having strong or weak rocks and everything will depend upon the rate of erosion and the resistance of these two. So equality in action, are they balanced or one is dominating over the other? Is erosion dominating or the rock is firm, hard? So it will all depend on these two things, right? So these are the four important things of this particular theory. So these laws all reflect what? The theory is based on these laws. So they reflect this perspective of spatial variation. That's where it is geographical, right? So spatial variation and dynamic equilibrium between driving forces and resisting forces. Remember Gilbert's work of driving and resistance forces? So driving forces are the erosional processes, the denudational processes, and resisting is what the rock structure is, what the composition is, what the slope angle is. Right? All these things related to the slope. So Hack's model is also therefore known as model of lithological adjustment to landforms. Now what is this lithological? It means rock. So study of rock types, rock structures. So lithology will determine. That's also very much important here. So lithological adjustment to the landforms. That's important. So the goal of this theory, if you observe here in this paragraph, it says that it's important to explain the landscapes of any region of the Earth's surface on the basis of present or contemporary denudational processes operating therein. Why? Because we have to demonstrate the lithological adjustment to the landforms for which he presented the examples from this Appalachian Mountains in US. Right? That's important here. Then further, the basic principles or basic premise of Hackian model, JT Hack's model of landscape development is what? This statement quoted directly from his work. What is the statement? You can quote the statement when you're writing your answer. The landscape and the processes that operate or that form it are part of an open system which is in steady state of balance, right? That's important to understand. It's not a closed system. It's an open system which is in tendency of steady state of balance. It wants to achieve a steady state. So Hack further conceived this reference systems on the basis of his assumptions. Now every theory had some assumptions. Remember Davis also, Pink as well. So if every theory related to landform development has some assumptions, it's important to learn. So what is the assumption here? Now read these five points. You can stop the video here and you can note it down as well. So the balance between denudational processes and rock resistance, first thing that's important. Uniform rate of down wasting or back wasting that we say, that is vertical erosion as well as horizontal erosion, or sidewise erosion. Then differences in characteristics of form, that is important to understand various kinds of geological patterns and shapes. And then processes, that is denudational processes, which operate not in the past, 
remember not the past processes but present operating processes and finally the lithological adjustment to those processes to the landforms that's important so these are the basic assumptions on which he built his model to explain why this landform looks like this and what is this dynamic equilibrium through this landscape he tried to explain so hack maintained his model was not comprehensive now remember hack never claimed that his model was the best model to explain why because he said that time can also be invoked to explain landscape features now unlike other theorists claiming that he was the biggest theorist he did not claim he said that even time could be he did not completely deny that's the important point he said he gave a different perspective but maybe time dependent models could also explain the landscape features but it does not apply to the entire range of spatial scale this was his major conclusion in his theory that his model was time independent it talked about contemporary processes not about the historical processes geological processes that's important so under dynamic equilibrium landscapes evolve without obvious change unless now here is the catch this unless there is a change in energy inputs now where this energy comes from what is the source of this energy input it is climatic change tectonism or surface resistant all these things surface resistance is the structure the rock softness hardness permeability all the components so examples of the later include denudation of surface materials to expose harder or softer materials as we have already talked so hack argued what like pink so hack's model is very close to pink's model where rates of upliftment and erosion are linked together in the theory right so it sounds very similar to pink's model that's important where you have one way the endogenetic processes and exogenetic processes combined together their ratio so something of that sort was very clear in hack's argument as well now if you look here the evaluation of this dynamic equilibrium theory so there are several comments to be made so one of them is past usually is poorly or only partly known thus a model based on current conditions has a definite advantage now if you talk about what happened in past many people could not visualize past by looking at the present so this model gave emphasis on present so that people can understand in a better way so this was a good point here then mutual relationship with process geomorphology now remember this was not about landforms itself it was also about the process part of geomorphology denudational processes that is important the second thing next to this is dynamic equilibrium implies characteristic forms nature of the landforms nature of the landscape not the passivity like it evolves over time so the, not that part was important then situations where form is not maintained also include what remember upliftment exceeding rates of erosion so increasing relief control by difference in rock resistances were also important which we also know by the name of inversion of topography that happens right a topography inverts changes upside down how do we observe it through this particular non maintenance of the situation where one factor dominates over the other so maybe upliftment can exceed over the erosion so you'll have a different landforms but where erosion exceeds over the upliftment you'll have a different landform so landscape can be inverted in the same area itself that's important so dynamic equilibrium is more of a conceptual framework than a fully tested model now this is important to understand that it provides a perspective for the landforms development that's most important point this gives you a theoretical framework a model to be worked out and actually looked into the field here so that was his main important point so ultimately you see this great scholar in 1978 al bloom right he actually evaluated the hackian model in right perspective and said what if however tectonics and climatic changes invalidate the assumption of initial uplift in that case or other constructional processes followed by still stand and landscape evolution then the dynamic equilibrium changing only from disequilibrium to equilibrium that is what is dynamic equilibrium is most suitable so what does it mean basically that in case of that initial uplift thought of division cycle right the tectonic model or the climate change model is not able to determine how this landform have evolved in that case this equilibrium model that is coming from disequilibrium position randomness to the orderness disorderness to the orderness will be helpful to explain so this is a different perspective a second opinion a second approach towards landforms development that is what bloom said in his 
code that's important to understand and evaluate the hacking model so now when we have understood in details the basic premise and concept of this dynamic equilibrium theory in the sessions to come we'll be also talking about morisawa's work shum's work so don't go anywhere stay tuned keep watching keep learning all the best wishes